And this is one of them. So it is a Shabbat. So we have two Shabbats in a row, two days in a row. So Shavuot is a celebration of two different things that are the same. Giving of the Spirit, sorry, giving of the Torah, and then giving of the Spirit. And they're the same exact thing. And the prayers for the morning service, like if you're looking for the prayers for Shavuot, uh, you just look in the regular morning prayer service, Shacharit prayer service. For all, uh, for Bikarim, for first fruit, I'm sorry, for Shavuot, you'll find it in the regular prayer service for Shacharit, regular prayer service for the afternoon, Mincha, regular prayer service for the evening, uh, Erev, or Arvit. So these will, some of these will look familiar, some of them will be a little different. Stand. <clears throat> Together. Matovu Ohalecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. I come into your holy house and bow toward your holy sanctuary in awe of you. Lord, I love the house where you dwell, the place where your glory sits. I prostrate myself and bow. I kneel before the Lord, my maker. In your great kindness, answer me with the truth of your salvation. For Yeshua, your Messiah, is truth and the answer to all we seek on your holy Shabbat. A person should be forever God-fearing in the uttermost or innermost part of the heart. Acknowledge the truth and speak the truth in the heart. Let us rise early and say, Ribon kol ha'olamim, master of all worlds. It is not because of our own righteousness that we present our prayers to you, but because of your abounding mercies. What are we? What is our life? What is our kindness? What is our righteousness? What is our strength? What can we say to you, Lord our God and God of our fathers? Our mighty are as nothing are most wise, as if they know nothing. The days of our lives as vanity before you, for all is vanity except the pure soul inside of us that is destined to give an accounting before your throne of glory. All the nations are as nothing before you. The nations are a drop in a bucket, seen as no more than dust on the scales. We'll do this slow, because I know you're unfamiliar with this Hebrew. Aval anachnu amecha britecha bene Avraham ohavcha adat Yaakov bincha bechorecha sheme ahavatecha she ahavta oto karata et shemo Yisrael veYishuru. But we are your people of your covenant. Children of Abraham, your beloved, the congregation of Jacob, your firstborn, whose name given in love because of your love for him, you called Israel and Yeshurun. Therefore, it is incumbent on us to thank, praise, and glorify you, to sanctify and offer praise and thanksgiving to your name. Ashreinu matov chalkenu. Uma naim goralenu, uma yafa yerushtenu. Happy are we. How good is our portion, how pleasant our lot, and how beautiful our heritage. Happy are we who early in the morning and in the evening, twice each day, declare, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'olam Ba'ed Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom to everlasting. You are the same before the world was created. You are the same since the world has been created. 
You are the same in this world, and you will be the same in the world to come. The kingdom. Sanctify your work in our world, and the people will sanctify your name. Through your salvation, you are the king. Raise and exalt our strength, and deliver us for the sake of your name. When it says congregation, that's you. <laughs> well, I'm saying it because you're not saying what you should say. Come on up. Come on up. Join us. Okay. You may be seated. Together, you are the Lord God in heaven and earth and the highest heaven of heavens. Truly you are the first and the last, and besides you there is no God. Gather your tzitzit together. Well, I'll just get these. Kabetz nefutz kovecha ma'arba kanfot ha'aretz. Let's do that again. Kabetz nefutzot kavecha. Ma'arba karfot ha'aretz. Gather the dispersed who long for you from the four corners of the earth. Let all mankind recognize and know that you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Our living and eternal Father in heaven, deal graciously and kindly with us for the sake of your great, mighty, and awesome name that you have put on us by the spirit of Yeshua the Messiah. Fulfill for us your word through Zephaniah, your prophet, who said, at that time I will bring you back, and at that time I will gather you, for I will make you renowned and glorified among all the peoples of the earth when I bring back your captivity from before your eyes. And that's why we gather the tzitzit together, because these are the Jews at the four corners of the earth that God is going to bring back and bring us together. Kaddish, together, let's stand. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shamei rabah. Amen. See where it says kong? That means congregation. <laughs> let's start over. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shamei rabah. Ba'alma divarach yirute v'yatsmach purkane v'yikarev mashiche. Amen. V'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye t'kol b'yit Yisrael. V'agala uv'izman kariv. Imru amen. Amen. Yehe shmei rabba mevarach ulalme almaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam Amen. Exalted and holy be his great name. Amen. Throughout the world he created according to his will. May he establish his kingship, bring forth his redemption, hasten the coming of Messiah in your lifetime and in your days and the lifetime of all the house of Israel, speedily and soon. And say amen. 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 May his great name be blessed forever and to everlasting. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, honored, adored, lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he. Beyond all blessings, hymns, praises, and consolations that are uttered in the world. And let us say, Amen. Hodula Adonai kir uvishmo, Hodi uvami mali lota, Shi hu lo zamru lo si hu bakol ni flota, Hit halalu bashem kad show. Yismach lev mabakshe Adonai. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. See to all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let our hearts those who seek the Lord be glad.
may be seated. Together, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember all the wonderful deeds he has done, the wonders and the judgments from his mouth. Zerah Yisrael Avdo, Bnei Yaakov Bechirav, seed of Israel his servant, sons of Jacob his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments in all the earth, his word he established to a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, and his oath to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. Hodu la Adonai Kito, Ki Leolam Kasto. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. Hold on just a second. You know where it says he kept his covenant for a thousand generations? Do you know how long a generation is in the Bible? 40 years. You are correct, ma'am. It's 40 years. There's some disagreement whether it's 70, 80, or 40 because of Psalm 90. But most rabbis say it's 40 years. So the covenant that God made with Abraham was right about the year 2000 in the biblical calendar, right? How many years is a thousand generations? 40,000. 4,000. 40 times 1,000 is 40,000. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's just the way it is. <laughs> okay, it is 40,000. But pictorially, it's 4,000. Right. It's a picture of 4,000 years. But what happened after what's going to happen after 4,000 years after the covenant? With Abraham That's in the year 2000. Time. What year is that? 4,000 plus 2,000? The kingdom. So that's, that's why it says he kept his covenant for a 1,000 generations. Because it's pictorially, it's a 1,000 generations from the covenant with Abraham to the kingdom. Let's do Hodul Adonai. Hodul Adonai Kitov, Ki Leolam Chasto. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. Adonai Hoshia, Hamelech Ya'anenu Biyom Kareinu, Hoshia et Amecha, Uvarech et Nachalatecha, Urem Vnasem Ad Haolam. Lord, save us. May the King answer us in the day we call. Save your people, bless your inheritance, tend them and care for them forever. Ashrei ha'am shekacha lo, Ashrei ha'am she'adonai elohav. Happy is the people whose lot is thus. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Can someone get me some water, please? Yeah, water. Oh, great. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. So we're at Ram Venisa. The king lifted up on the throne. So what do we do? Stand. You stand before the king. Hamelech Yoshev, al kise Ram Venisa, the king who sits on a throne high and lifted up. May your name be praised forever, our king in heaven and earth. For to you, Lord our God and God of our fathers, forever and ever. It is fitting to give praise, song, victory, strength, worship, and holiness, kingship, and thanks to your holy name. You are the only king, life of all worlds. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Bless the Lord who is to be blessed. Bless the Lord who is to be blessed. Everlasting. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer Or, Uvorei Choshech, Osei Shalom, Uvorei Et HaKol. Blessed are you, Lord our God, everlasting King, who creates light, creates darkness, who makes peace, and creates all things. Be eternally blessed, our Rock, our King, and our Redeemer, who created holy beings, who creates ministering angels, who stand in the heights of the universe and proclaim aloud in unison the words of the living God and King. Let's say this together. 
את שם המלך הגדול, הגבור והנורא קדוש הוא. The name of the king, the great, the powerful, and awesome one. Holy is he. Let's do kadosh up on your toes at kadosh and at holy. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Sabaot, Malo Kol Haaretz Kavodo, Baruch Kavod Adonai Mim Komo. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. When the new song, the redeemed people extolled your great name at the seashore, all of them in unison gave thanks and acclaimed your sovereignty and said, The Lord shall reign forever and ever. And he said, Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, who delivered Israel. Now we are going to do the Amida. Remember, we take three steps forward and three steps back. It's a picture of going from the year 4,000 when Yeshua died into the kingdom. That's three, the, you know, three days later, two days, and then the kingdom. Getting stuff and bringing it back. That's why we do the Amida. We're praying. We're thanking God for all the different blessings, 18 blessings. But we're going into the kingdom to get from him. What is ours? Take your steps forward. Adonai svatai tiftach ufi yagi tehilateka. Baruch ata Adonai. Eloheinu velohe avotenu. Elohe Abraham velohe Yitzchak velohe Yaakov. Ha'el, Hagadol, Hagibor, Bahanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim. Blessed are you, Lord our God, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God Most High, who does acts of loving kindness and good, who remembers the loving kindness of the fathers, and brings a Redeemer. Messiah Yeshua, to their children for the sake of his name. Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagen, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magen Abraham, King, Helper, Savior, Shield, Blessed are you, Lord, Shield of Abraham. Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai, Mechaye Metim Ata, Rav Lahoshia. You are mighty forever, my Lord. You resurrect the dead. You are mighty to save. Morid Hatal. We say that in summer. May the dew descend during summer. He sustains the living with mercy, resurrects the dead in great mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the bound, and stays faithful with those asleep in the dust. Who compares to you? who brings death and restores life and causes salvation to spring forth. But na'amanata lahachayot metim baruch ata adonai machaye hametim You are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, Lord, who resurrects the dead. Ata kadosh v'shimcha kadosh ukdoshim v'kol yom Ya Haleluja, Baruch Ata Adonai, Ha'el. You are holy, and your name is holy, and the Holy Ones praise you daily forever. Blessed are you, Lord, Holy God. Return in mercy to Jerusalem, your city, and dwell there as you have promised, speedily establish there the throne. Oh, we didn't know that was together. This is the Amidah. Turn in mercy. It's the Amidah. Oh, okay. actually, 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 I should say this. The Amidah is actually done privately. Yeah. It's like you, you're, you're with yourself with God. It's just you and your, yourself. So this is just to help. Return in mercy to Jerusalem, your city, and dwell there as you have promised. Speedily establish there the throne of David. 
your servant, and rebuild it soon in our days, built forever. Baruch atah Adonai, Bonei Yerushalayim. Blessed are you, Lord, rebuilder of Jerusalem. The shoot of David, your servant, caused to quickly flourish and increase his power by your salvation, Yeshua. For all day we await your salvation. Baruch atah Adonai, Bonei Yerushalayim. Blessed are you, Lord, who causes the horn of salvation to flourish. May it be your will, Lord our God, for your people Israel's prayers to be heard, to restore the service of your temple sanctuary, and accept with love and favor Israel's fire offerings and prayer. And may the service of your people always find favor. May our eyes see your return to Zion in mercy. Baruch atah Adonai. Hamachazir shenichato letzion. Blessed are you, Lord, who restores His dwelling presence to Zion. Odi manach nu lach sheatahu Adonai Eloheinu veElohei avotenu leolam bayet. I cannot read those words without singing that. Odi manach nu lach sheatahu Adonai Eloheinu veElohei. Avotenu leolam bayetem, Odi manach nu lach, Shetahu Adonai Eloheinu veElohei, Avotenu leolam bayet. We give thanks to you that you are He that is the Lord our God, and God of our fathers forever. You are the strength of our life, the shield of our salvation to all generations. Our souls are in your hand, are entrusted to you. Your miracles are with us every day. You are the merciful one. Your mercies and kindness never end. And we always put our hope in you. For all this, we give you thanks and we bless you. Blessed are you who sanctifies the Shabbat, Israel, and the festival seasons for the Torah, for the holy service, for the prophets, for this day of Shavuot, for this holy festival day which you have given us, Lord our God, for gladness and joy for glory and splendor. For all this we give you thanks and we bless you. May your name be blessed by all the living. Baruch Ata Adonai. Mikadesh HaShabbat Yisrael Bahazmanim. Blessed are you, Lord, who sanctifies Shabbat, Israel, and the festive seasons. And for all these, may your name, our King, be continually blessed, exalted, and extolled to everlasting. Give peace, goodness, blessing, mercy on us, and all your people Israel. Bless us as one with the light of your face, for by it you gave us the Torah of life, loving kindness, righteousness, blessing, shalom. May it be your will to bless Israel at all times with your shalom. Baruch atah Adonai, hamvarech et amo Yisrael, shalom. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who blesses his people Israel with peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock, my redeemer. My God, guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking lies. Let my soul be silent to those who curse me and my soul be like dust to everyone. Open my heart to your Torah and let my soul run to pursue your mitzvot. Osei shalom bimromah, hu yaasei shalom aleinu, be'al kol Yisrael. Osei shalom bimromah, hu yaasei shalom aleinu, be'al kol Yisrael. Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. He who makes peace in his heights, may he make peace for us and for all Israel. And let us say, Amen. So, this is Shavuot. Shavuot is, as I said, the giving of two things on the same day. 
One is the Torah, and one is the Spirit. The, most, the two most important things that God gave ever, and they were both given on the same day. So we've been counting the Omer, 49 days, 7 weeks. Yesterday we counted the 49th day, and now we are at the arrived destination. This is the destination that we've been waiting for, for the last 7 difficult weeks. And if they haven't been difficult for you, I venture to say you're not in God's will. <laughs> because the counting of the Omer is supposed to be a difficult time. It's supposed to be a really good time, but a difficult time. Gold is worthless when it's in that chunk of rock. It's just worthless, it's nothing. When it's crushed, the ore that's around it, it's crushed, all that's taken out, and then that gold is taken out from the ore and smelted, then it's worth something. And that's how God is with Israel. And it's pretty amazing that God spoke to us 3,000 years ago and then never said another word. Really. I mean, physically showed up and said another word. For 3,500 years. And yet, you go anywhere on the planet and do a Jewish thing, and all the Jews, like flies, they just all come. They all gather together. They come out of the holes, and they come gather together. Why? Because there's some Jewish dude talking about some Jewish stuff. Or they sing a Jewish song, and everybody goes and dances and sings and stuff like that. But God talked to us 3,500 years ago and never said another word. Really. Never showed up physically and spoke to us again. And yet, the Jews have held on for 3,500 years. Think about that. That is amazing. I mean, to, for God to put that into, into our hearts is just, it's phenomenal. I mean, think about it. You tell your kids something one time, do they do it? Uh-uh. You have to say it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And then even after they, you said it over and over and they do it a little bit, then what do they do? They stop doing it. And they've got to go tell them again and again. But God didn't do that. God said it one time. One time. And that was it. It's pretty amazing. And this was the day he said it. He showed up physically to Israel. Physically. And spoke to us. So, we are going to read the ten words. Typically, you stand to hear the ten words. <clears throat> I don't want to tax you too much, but let's stand. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> yeah. Only if we make some noise. Only if we make some noise. <clears throat> so, we're going to read the ten words. It's not ten commandments, remember. <clears throat> it's Asera Dibrot. Asera? Asera means ten, and Dibrot means words or things. Asera. Asera. Not Asera. Asera. It's Asera. Asera Dibrot. We say these together. Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of that which is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my lips clean. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him uncorrected who takes his name in vain. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, <clears throat> the seventh day is a Shabbat to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, 
your male slave or your female slave or your cattle or your resident alien who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. For that reason, the Lord blessed the Shabbat day and made it holy. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male slave, or female slave, or his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. You may be seated. Number five is missing. You shall honor your father and mother. Oh, thank you. There's another mistake. Number five is missing. You shall not. You shall honor your father and mother. <laughs> When God gave these ten words, there was all this to do that happened before he spoke this. And the to do, the things that happened, were all repeated. 1,500 years later in the book of Acts in chapter 2. All exactly the same stuff. I don't know if you know this, if you've heard it, if you've read it. But we're just going to deal with a little bit of this, not all of it. In the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt on that very day. Now when it says third month, that very day, that means third day. It's just the same day. So it's third month, third day, they arrive at Mount Sinai. They came to the wilderness of Sinai. When they set out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and they camped in the wilderness. And there Israel camped in front of the mountain. Now it doesn't say in front of the mountain. You know what it says? Anybody know? Not in the mountain? Under the mountain. Good. Under the mountain. It says they camped underneath the mountain. And it says in the Talmud and the Midrash, both, that the Mount Sinai was like raised over them like a bowl, like a tub. And that if they didn't keep the mitzvot, <laughs> comes down on top of them. But then another Midrash comes behind that and says, yes, it was suspended above them like a chuppah because this was their betrothal and all the rabbis went ah <laughs> that's correct we like that so it's the third day the third month they come they're under the mountain and Moshe went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain saying say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel now when it says the house of Jacob that's the women the sons of Israel, that's the men. And so what that means is all Jews for all eternity. All Jews forever. It, it's not just them. It's all the children that they're going to have. So God spoke this to all Jews forever. You yourself have seen, he said, I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed hear my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession. Now this is not very good translation, but I'm gonna tell you a better translation of it. You shall be my own possession among all the peoples, all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now we, we saw last week and two, uh, sorry, yesterday and then two weeks ago that God brought Israel into the desert to Mount Sinai. Why? Because Har Sinai is a picture of what? Good humility and the desert the wilderness is being alone it's our aloneness with God nobody nobody else on the planet shares this aloneness with the Jewish people nobody when uh, Balaam the great wizard of the demons who's the greatest prophet who ever lived if Moses hadn't been around and if he wasn't a demon worshiper he'd have been the greatest prophet who ever lived he said I see them. I see them from the top of the mountains. They are a people that are separated, totally separated, and will not be counted with the Gentiles. Totally different from everybody. That's our aloneness, and that is why God brought us to the wilderness, to be alone. 
So he says, I've made you my own possession, whatever that means, among all the peoples, because all the earth is mine, and you shall be, a, be to me, mamlechet kohanim, a kingdom of priests, v'goy kadosh, and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the sons of Israel. So Moshe came, he called the elders of the people, set before them all the words which the Lord had established to him. Then all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moshe brought back these words of the people to the Lord, and the Lord said to Moshe, look, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe in you, Moshe, forever. That's what God's desire was. Think about that. That all Israel and then all other people, if it's possible, believe in Moshe forever. You never heard that before, did you? Believe in Moshe forever. It doesn't say believe in Jesus. It says believe in Moshe forever. That's God's desire. Amen. And then Moshe later on said in Deuteronomy that one is coming like me from among your brothers. You better listen to him. And that was the Messiah. But the whole, the whole thing that God set up was believe in Moses forever. And then, verse, what verse are we in? 10. The Lord said to Moshe, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and have them wash their garments and have them ready for the third day. So if it's three days later, what's the date? Okay, what date did they come to the mountain? Third day. Third day. Third day. So three, three. Yes? yes. So they're going to meet God on what date? The sixth. The sixth, right? The sixth, three six. That's today. So he gets them ready for the three days, and he says, "Set boundaries around the mountain. Don't touch it. If anything touches it, it has to be killed." No hand shall touch him. Even animals, if any, even animals pass that boundary and get near the mountain, it's to be killed. Why? To create fear. Now, that's not usually what God wants to do, but in this case it had to be done. Because God wants two parts of the Torah to be seen. The curse of the law, the terror, and all the pictures which he would soon give, all the pictures of heaven. But he first had to give the curse, and he had to give fear, terror. And so these ten words that we recited badly, when they came, it says they came and the words, the, the, they came in lightning and thunder, but the lightning split. And they saw kolot. You know what kolot means? Tongues. Voices. How do you say that? How do you say in Spanish tongues or languages? Lenguas. Lenguas. That's what it is in, in Spanish. Lenguas. Tongues of fire is what they saw. And they, these were the words. These were the ten words coming out. And they saw it in 70 tongues of fire. This is what the Talmud says. I'm not making this up. <coughs> and so it says in the passage that they saw. They saw the words. Now, 1,500 years goes by, Yeshua comes, he dies, he provides atonement, and then 50 days after the first Sunday, which was the third day, which was Bikarim, when he rose, he rose from the grave. He didn't rise to earth, he just rose from the grave on Bikarim, three days after his death, and that day was the beginning of the counting of the Omer. And exactly 50 days later, on Shavuot, this happened. So let's look at this. When the day of Shavuot had come, so what's the date? Six. Three six. It's called month day. Three six. Yes. The, the sixth day of Sivan. When three six came, they were all together in one place. Now they were not in an upper room. That is a myth. That's a narrative that happened earlier. But now it's Shavuot. Where are all Jews supposed to be at Shavuot? Temple. In the temple. How do you know that? 
because it says it in, in Exodus, in Leviticus, and in Deuteronomy, that all three uh, festivals, Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, all Jewish males are to come up to the temple. Yes? Yep. So where, is it? where are they all? They're in the yep. temple, because it's Shavuot, in one place. And suddenly a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven. Now it says in Exodus that it's Shavuot that there was this earthquake and a horrible shofar getting louder and louder and louder and louder and thunder <laughs> and just this horrible sounds and it got louder and louder and louder. Same thing happened. So I don't know what you have seen in your head, but it's nothing like what has ever been shown. Because this is the sound of God's voice splitting into tongues of fire. Just like what happened at Shavuot. And the way it says it is a violent rushing wind. <laughs> now what it says in the Hebrew, back in Exodus, it says that there was the sound of a blast furnace. Not a regular furnace, a blast furnace. Do you know what a blast furnace is? Like that means, no, not like a kill. This is, this is different from a kill. This is something that you force air into and it forces air out and it refines gold and silver. And this is what it sounds like. It's loud. Much hotter than a regular furnace. Much hotter than a regular furnace because of the oxygen that's coming in and out. And so it is loud. And this is what they heard. They heard the same thing that they heard, that Israel heard in Exodus chapter 19. It's exactly the same. And then it says, it filled the whole house where they were sitting. What house are they sitting in? Temple. What house are they sitting in? Yeah. So now the Spirit of God has filled God's house. When did that happen before? When they built the Mishkan and they erected the Mishkan, a picture of heaven, and the Holy Spirit came down in the form of the cloud and filled the house with fire. Yes? Amen. So Amen. this is the same thing. <clears throat> so they're sitting there in the house. The house is filled with the glory of God. And then it says, and Lashon Ish, tongues of fire. It's exactly the same words that appear in Exodus 19. But in the Talmud, in the Talmud is where we read that God spoke in tongues. In the Talmud. That's the only place that ever appears in the writings of the rabbis. That God spoke in tongues. How many tongues did he speak in? Seventy. seventy. Why? Because there are seventy nations. And so he spoke in all seventy tongues of the, of the Gentiles, of the nations. Well, same thing happened here. Got, there, there's these tongues of fire coming out, which is the ten words. And they appeared to them, appeared to them. What does that mean? They, they saw. They saw. What did they see? The what is the tongues of fire? Lightning. No. The words. The words. The words. Words. Out of the mouth. They saw the words. Now, there are many, many, many rabbis who've written about this and spoken about this through the centuries, and they say, we can see words? And they make a big deal about it, and they talk about it a lot. It just happened again this year. Another rabbi wrote a big article about, is it possible to see words? Yes, they saw words. And then the same thing happened in the, in the book of Acts. But, and it says... Tongues like fire appeared to them. They saw the sounds, distributing themselves, and a tongue rested on each one of them. So how many Talmidim, disciples of Yeshua, had a tongue sit on them? Seventy. Yes? Seventy? Doesn't it say that Yeshua in Matthew, can't remember where it is, sorry, that he had seventy Talmidim? Doesn't it say that? Yeah. Here they are. This is them. And the, these tongues of fire are resting on them, each one with a different language. And then it says, 
they were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and began to speak with different tongues, 70 tongues, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. Now, there were Jews staying in Jerusalem. Why were there Jews staying in Jerusalem? It's Shavuot. All the Jews from all over the planet come up to Jerusalem. That's why they're there. And, uh, let's see, 70 tongues in heaven. Okay, let's see. And the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak. And devout men from every nation. Isn't that strange? Devout men, not just, gen, not just Jews. Devout men, Jews and Gentiles, from every one of the 70 nations. Why did God have 70 representatives from all 70 nations? I'm sure that didn't happen every year. That somebody from all 70 nations went up to Jerusalem? I don't think that happened every year. It would be nice if it did, but I don't think it did. But that year it did. And why do you think God did that? So each one could go, hey, I'm from Arab lands. And no, that Galilean is talking like me. Hey, I'm from Cappadocia. And he's talking like me. So all 70 nations could say, that's the word of God. That's the Torah. Right. That's the Torah. In, right, in my, filling the whole earth with his Torah. In my language, I recognize it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's why God had him go up. It says there were devout men from every nation under heaven. And we know that's 70. And when this sound occurred of the words of fire, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, aren't these all guys from Galilee? They follow that Yeshua dude? And there's 70 of them? And they're from Galilee? But we hear them speaking in our language. And there's 70 of us. And we all recognize those 70 guys speaking. I, this is just amazing to me. And every year that I read this, I find something else that I didn't see before that was repeated. And then it lists a, a whole bunch of the 15 of the nations, by the way. We hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity. So then they start going, I get, these guys got to be drunk. And then Peter Kepha stands up and he says, no, they're not drunk. It's only 8 in the morning. What does that tell you? They're going to have wine later. But not yet. It's only 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the third hour of the day. They're not drinking yet. This is what was prophesied in the, in the Torah, that the Holy Spirit would come. And it's in what form? The Torah. The Torah. Judaism. The Holy Spirit is going to come. In what form? The Torah. Judaism. I, you know, I used to say this all the time. If you have a Bible, go to I never say that anymore. I don't even know if you guys bring Bibles. Yeah, we do. Okay, go to Jeremiah 33. Spiritual bring Bibles. Yes, only the spiritual people bring Bibles. Jeremiah 33. Trying to, I, I can't concentrate. Hold on. Okay. Uh, verse 20. All right, Eileen, what do you say? I, I kept thinking it was in the 13 principles of faith. Doesn't it say that God is also lowly? It says that they're also, because you're talking about. Us. No, that's in Adon Alam. In Adon, Adon Alam, it says nobody shares his loneliness. His loneliness. His aloneness. Mm -hmm. All right, in Jeremiah 33, verse 20, it says, if you can. Break my covenant for the day, my covenant for the night, so that day and night will not be there at their appointed time. Then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant. And he won't have a son to reign on his throne. And I'll break that covenant with the Levitical priests, if you can break the covenant with day and night, which you cannot. So in other words, the covenant is never, never broken. I'm sorry, where were we? Jeremiah 33. 33. 
If, if my covenant for day and night doesn't stand in the fixed patterns of heaven and earth I haven't established, then I would break the covenant with, with the Jewish people. It's never going to be broken. It never has been broken. Now in chapter 34, verse 13, thus says the Lord, I made a covenant with your forefathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And he starts talking about that covenant. And then he says, I'm never... I'm going to bring a new covenant that's different because you guys broke that one. As soon as you came out of Egypt, you broke it. Just very, very shortly after. So I'm going to do a new covenant. And so he promises a new covenant. Well, this is it. This is it. This is the new covenant. But notice it's Torah. And it says in Jeremiah, I will write the Torah on their hearts. I'll write what on their hearts? Not the love of Christ. That's right. I'll cause them to do Judaism, to walk in my ways. This is always missed. It's always missed. Even by those people who have been doing a little bit of Judaism and studying Judaism for a long time, it's still missed that the Torah and the Spirit are exactly, exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. What you just said was Hold on just a second. God says, I'm going to make a new covenant by the Spirit. I'm going to write the Torah on the hearts. That's what he did here. So he repeated everything that happened at, Sukh at Shavuot. Again, visually, audio, they could hear it, they could see it, but when it's translated into Greek in the New Testament, you lose all the link to the Torah. It's easy to miss, it's easy to, to lose it. Go ahead. What you just said was so amazing, that because it was broken, he gave a new one. What mercy yes. and grace. What incredible mercy that God made a new covenant because Israel broke the old one. But it does, he never got rid of the old one. He says, I'll never break my covenant. And he still made a new one. He just redid the same one over. He did the same one over, except he wrote it on the heart. But he wrote it on the heart, the Torah. Right. So, in Exodus 19, when God brings the Jews up to the mountain, he says this. He says, you're going to be my own. We read, what? how did it say? My own precious possession is that how it said it not a very good translation so now we're coming back to what I've been teaching the last week last two weeks that God brought us into the the aloneness of the desert to teach humility because all of Judaism if you distill it down to one thing I don't think you're gonna like what I'm about to say I'm going to try to say it nice, but no matter how I say it, I don't think you're going to like it. But I'm going to say it nice. I don't have any grudge to grind against anybody anymore. I'm saying this as nice as anybody can say. If you distill Judaism down to one thing, it's humility. If you distill normative Christianity down to one thing, they say it's love. But it's not. It's pride. It's pride. And I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. It says that in Romans chapter 11. Hellenism breeds pride. Judaism is supposed to create humility. Problem is, for most of us, it doesn't. I know it didn't for me for many, many years. It does now. That's, that's, all, that's all I can do is try to fix the damage I've done and try to have that humility really cook inside of me so this is what God was doing was bringing his own people that he set apart to be special and different into the desert where there's nothing and then <laughs> scares them and then says I love you so much I'm going to give you 
everything about me in these words. And he shows it to him. Now remember we saw these words from Rabbi Shlomo Zarki yesterday and the words from Rashi about why did God bring Israel into the wilderness to Mount Sinai. So first we're going to read this again. Say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel, you yourself have seen I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. I brought you to me. This is the wedding. This is the betrothal. God betrothing Israel. I brought you to myself. Now then, if you'll indeed hear my voice and keep my covenant, then and only then Will you be to me a treasure? This is a proper translation of this word, segula. Then you'll be a treasure, a precious treasure among all the peoples. Because, I mean, think about it. The whole world is mine, but I've taken you as different and special, a treasure. And you'll be to me a mamlechet kohanim, a kingdom of priests, and the Goy Kadosh, and a holy nation. But only if, only if you hear my voice, keep my covenant. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel, only to Israel. Now Rashi said about why did God count the Jews over and over like we read yesterday? Because they were dear to him. That means precious to him. That's the word segula, dear, precious to him, segula to him. That's why he counted them so often, because he wanted to look at them and talk to them and number them and have an anniversary and say you're special to me. You shall be to me a segula. So he counted when they left Egypt. He counted them uh, when he came, when he caused the Shekhinah to fall on the tabernacle after they built the tabernacle. And then he numbered them in the first chapter of the Midbar. And these words from Rabbi Shlomo Zarki, thus the exercise of counting is a demonstration of God's affection, his love for his people. He wants them to know he's keeping count of them. And each one is of value. How many Jews were there? When they came out of Egypt, how many Jews were? 603,000. 600,000. About 600,000. And in the book of Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 1, there's 603,000 plus. So there's 600,000, and he wants each one of them, there's actually about 3 million, but there's 600,000 men who could join the army. He wants every one of them to know that they're special and counted. This is the word segula. Deuteronomy 7, 6, 14, 2, 26, 17 through 18, all have this word segula about Israel. You know, um, like if you read Nazi propaganda, which you should do, you should educate yourself and read Nazi propaganda. They talked a lot about the Jews being called the chosen people. And they mocked it. Some of them didn't mock them. Some of them said, yes, the Jews are the chosen people of God. We're throwing them in the ovens anyway. They didn't mock it. They just said it as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact to them. And yet, for most believers, the Jewish people are not. They're afraid to call Jews the chosen people. Some aren't, obviously. But some are. They're afraid to say, oh, the Jews, they're God's chosen, treasured people. And just leave it at that. Well, God leaves it at that. Three times, Deuteronomy 7, Deuteronomy 14, and Deuteronomy 26. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. He has chosen you to be to him a la'am segula, and a people treasured. A treasured people, la am segula, above all people, above all peoples. See, that makes me scared. That makes me scared. Above all peoples, 
It sounds like he wants to raise up the Jews, doesn't it? Yes. And it, that's what it means. It literally says that, above all peoples. And he repeats it again, just so you, do, you don't miss it. Above all peoples that are on the face of the earth. You see why Judaism is all about humility? God himself wants to raise the Jews up. You better stay humble. Deuteronomy 14. And by the way, these are the words that appear right before God gives the kosher laws in Deuteronomy 14. He gives them in Leviticus 11 too, but in Deuteronomy 14 when he gives them, the introductory words are, you are my am segula, my treasured people. Now, keep kosher. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be la'am segola, a people treasured, out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. And then in Deuteronomy 26, he really lays it on thick. Walk in his ways. What are his ways? Torah. 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 Yes? Yes. Keep his chokim, his statutes. Give me an example of a statute. These are the ones that have no explanation. Tzitzit. Tzitzit, that's a good one. Red heifer, that's one too. Kosher laws. Sha'atnes, uh, separating uh, linen and wool. Mikvah. Mikvah, that's another statue or chok. Shabbat. Shabbat is not a chok. Nida is a chok. Nida separating a woman in her uncleanness, that's a chok. There's a lot of them. And he says, if you'll keep the chokim and his mitzvot, give me an example of a mitzvah. Don't steal. Don't steal. Honor Shabbat. Honor Shabbat. Honor Shabbat. The festivals. The prayers, Shabbat. the prayers, Shabbat, okay. Uh, and you keep his, his or it says ordinances, his judgments, mishpatim. And then listen to his voice through them. Do them and then listen to his voice through the doing of it. The Lord has, the, to, has today declared you to be his La am segula, is am segula, and look what he says, so that he will put you high above the Gentiles. That's what it says. He will put you high above the Gentiles, which he has made for glory, for fame, for honor, and that you shall be a holy or consecrated, set-apart people to the Lord your God, just as he said. And then in Psalm 135, it's repeated by David. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it's lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel, as his own possession. Lis gulato. Lis gulato. Same word. As his special Segula, treasure. So, I got a treasure. Everybody likes to see a treasure box. Everybody likes that. Why? Because there's gold and there's precious things. And, but they didn't start out like that. They started out in a rock. They started out ugly. Nothing. Just a rock. And then somebody crushed the rock. And somebody extracted the gold from it. And then somebody stuck it in a blast furnace. <laughs> you think you got it tough? <laughs> I mean, we got it so easy, it's ridiculous. And we still won't do more Judaism. Because we're lazy, because our flesh doesn't want us to. But I'm telling you, if we'll do more, if you'll do more Judaism and stop being lazy, I mean it. If you'll stop being lazy, I got the same deal. If we'll stop being lazy and do more and try, make an effort, won't be so bad. 
the blast furnace isn't so bad. It's not so hard to extract the beautiful gold so you can have a treasure because this is what we're supposed to be. And just like, you know, my wife is my treasure and we had a wedding and we have anniversaries, Israel's the same thing to God. And we had a wedding and we have our anniversary today. Our wedding was today at Shavuot. So let's stand and let's pray and thank him for being our husband. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for Shavuot. Thank you for giving us your ways. Thank you for giving us your prayers, all of your ways. And I ask, Father God, that you would turn your body, all of your body, to your ways. Let's read this part of the Amidah together. For all this, we give you thanks and bless you. Hold on. Let's read this part together. Give it a shot. For all this, we give you thanks and bless you. Blessed are you who sanctifies the Shabbat, Israel, and the festival season. For the Torah, for the holy service, for the prophets, for this day of Shavuot, for this holy festival day which you have given us, Lord our God, for gladness and joy, for glory and splendor, for all this we give you thanks and bless you. May your name be blessed by all the living. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mikadesh et Shabbat, Yisrael Bahazmanim. Blessed are you, Lord, who sanctifies Shabbat, Israel, and the festival season. Shabbat Shalom. It is a Shabbat. Shabbat.